We learned all about variability and that it describes how spread out the data is. We saw the scores from several members on math teams from a math competition. We saw that the blue team had scores that were more spread out and we said they had greater variability. But how do you describe the variability? Well, the reality is we can describe it numerically using what's called the standard deviation. Standard deviation simply measures how concentrated the data are around the mean. What is that talking about? Well, take a look at these two pictures. In this first picture, we see that all of the data points are right at 5, which is the mean. These points are all concentrated around the mean, they're very close to it. In the other picture, the data points are much more spread out. They're less concentrated around the mean. When they're concentrated, they're very close. When we're working with standard deviation, we have to remember that this is a great tool to use, but we can only use it when the data is symmetric. Let's take a look at what happens. Here we have several points. We have a dot plot and we have seven points on it that have a mean of five. Here's what we're going to do. Watch the points. We're going to slowly move them closer to the mean, which is in the center. And when we do that, we're going to take a look at the standard deviation. We don't know yet how to calculate the standard deviation, what we want you to do right now is just get a feeling for what it looks like. Let's reset our points. We have a standard deviation right now of 3.7033. Now watch what happens when the points move closer to the mean. Notice that the standard deviation got a bit smaller. As the points move closer and closer to the mean, the standard deviation continues to get smaller until it's to zero. When all of the points are directly on the mean, then the standard deviation is zero. Let's take a look at what that looks like in practice. We have five dogs. We measured their heights. We recorded them down and we calculated the mean. The average height of the dog was 394 millimeters. Then we'll calculate the standard deviation. Again, we don't quite know how to calculate the standard deviation, but what we'll do right now is use that number in order to better understand what it means. The standard deviation is 147. That means we'll look 147 units above the mean and 147 units below the mean. We now have an area from 247 to 541. Between those two heights are the typical height of a dog. We can expect that the average dog will be somewhere between 247 and 541 millimeters. In our first exercise today, we're going to calculate the standard deviation for a data set. Yesterday, we worked with two brands of batteries, brand A and brand B. We looked at the dot plots to compare the variability. Today, we're going to put a number on that variability by calculating the standard deviation. Here's how we do it. We begin by finding the mean of the data set. We add the numbers up and divide by six because there were six batteries. We find that the mean is 101. Our second step is to calculate the deviations from the mean. We learned in our last video that if we take the mean 101 minus the life of the battery, 83, 94, etc that we can calculate the deviations from the mean for each data point. When I subtract each of them from the data point, we get negative 18, negative 7, negative 5, 5, 12, and 13. Remember, a negative deviation from the mean means that that life of the battery was less than average. A positive deviation from the mean means that the life of that battery was greater than average. Now we're going to do something else. We're going to take those deviations and we're going to square each number. When we square negative 18, we get 324. When we square negative 7, we get 49, and so on and so forth. Then we'll take those numbers and we'll add them all up. We add the squared deviations and we get a sum of 736. We're almost done. Now, we count how many batteries there were. In this case, there were six batteries. We divide by one less, so we divide by five. 
736 divided by 5 is 147.2. Finally, we take the square root of that number and we get 12.1326007. That's the standard deviation. The standard deviation of this data set is 12.133. Notice that the equal sign is actually squiggled. That's actually because that means approximately. Whenever you round, you should use an approximate symbol so that readers know that you rounded a number. In our second exercise, we have the table for brand B batteries. We have the life expectancy in hours, and we'd like to calculate the standard deviation. You're going to follow the same process. Please pause the video here to calculate the standard deviation for brand B batteries. We calculate the mean to be 100.5. That allows us to calculate the deviations from the mean. Once we've calculated the deviations, we then square them and we get the squared deviations. We now add them together. On line 4, we find that the sum of the squared deviations is 2,692. Now, we have to divide by n minus 1. We know that we had 8 batteries, so we'll divide by 7. We get a nice long number with a decimal. Don't round yet. You don't want to round until the very, very end of the example. Then, we'll take the square root of that number. We find that the standard deviation is approximately 19 0.61 hours. So what does that mean? Well, we can see that brand A has a much smaller standard deviation than brand B. We can use that to compare the variability of their life expectancies. We know that since brand A has a smaller deviation, that brand A has less variation. Because it has less variation, that means that the life expectancy of the batteries is much more consistent. We actually knew that yesterday, though. Take a look at the dot plot. We saw yesterday that the mean was about the same for each of the sets. We also drew the box around the sets, and we saw that brand A, the one in red, was much closer to the mean. They weren't as spread out. So it makes sense that brand A would have a smaller standard deviation than brand B would. In summary, here's what we should know. The standard deviation measures a typical deviation from the mean. Remember the heights of the typical dogs. We can calculate a standard deviation by following a few simple steps. The unit of the standard deviation is always going to be the same as the units of the original set. When we were talking about the dogs, the units were millimeters. When we were talking about the batteries, the units were hours. The larger the standard deviation, the greater the spread or the variability of the data set is. This is a great way to talk about the variability of two sets whenever the data is symmetric.